An extract from The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. Dad handed me a tissue as I sat down. I blew my nose, threaded the tubes around my ears and put the nubbins back in. After a high school friend told some stories about Gus's considerable basketball talents and his many qualities as a teammate, the minister said, We'll now hear a few words from Augustus's special friend, Hazel. Special friend? There were some murmurs in the audience, so I figured it was safe for me to start out by saying to the minister, I was his girlfriend. That got a laugh. Then I began reading from the eulogy I'd written. There's a great quote in Gus's house, one that both he and I found very comforting. Without pain, we couldn't know joy. Gus's parents, arm in arm, hugged each other and nodded at every word. Funerals, I had decided, are for the living. After his sister Julie spoke, the service ended with a prayer about Gus's union with God, and I thought back to what he told me at Orangey, that he didn't believe in mansions and harps, but did believe in capital S something, and so I tried to imagine him capital S somewhere as we prayed. But even then I could not quite convince myself that he and I would be together again. I knew that time would now pass for me differently than it would for him that I, like everyone in that room, would go on accumulating loves and losses while he would not. And for me, that was the final and truly unbearable tragedy. When Mum and Dad and I got in the car, I said, I don't want to go. I'm, I'm tired. Hazel, Mum said. Mum, there won't be a place to sit and it'll last forever and I'm exhausted. Hazel, we have to go for Mr and Mrs Waters, Mum said. Just, I said, I felt so little in the back seat for some reason. I kind of wanted to be little. I wanted to be like six years old or something. Fine, I said. I just stared out the window a while. I really didn't want to go. I didn't want to see them lower him into the ground in the spot he'd picked out with his dad. And I didn't want to see his parents sink to their knees in the dew-wet grass and moan in pain. And I didn't want my parents to have to stand there beneath the clear blue sky with its certain slant of afternoon light, thinking about their day and their kid and my plot and my casket. And my dirt. But I did these things. I did all of them and worse. Because mum and dad felt we should.